Hello everyone and welcome to the first video on how to create your very own programming language. This series will be written using Python 3 but feel free to follow along with any other language. Ok so in this series we are going to be implementing our own version of BASIC uh, but the concept should stay the same for any other language. Ok so this is what the result is going to look like by the end of the first three episodes. So we'll be able to add numbers subtract numbers, multiply numbers, divide numbers, we'll be able to use floating points as well, so 2.5 plus 1.2, that's 3.7. We will be able to use parentheses to um, change the order of operations, and if we leave out the parentheses it will follow the correct order of operations, so it will do the multiplication first, and as you can see we'll have a different result. We will also be able to put in negative numbers, and operate with those as well. Okay, so as you can see, we're only going to be working with numbers and operations in the first three videos, and then after that, we're going to be expanding our language to have loads of other features like if statements, functions, uh, variables, and lots, lots more. All right, let's begin. So we're going to create a new file called shell.py, and this is going to have an infinite loop that will read in the raw input from the terminal window. So we'll just print out the text to make sure everything is working. And it looks like that's working. So the first thing we have to do is create the lexer, and we'll be doing that in this video. The lexer will go through the input character by character and break up the text into a list of what we call tokens in the process. A token is a simple object which has a type and optionally a value. Each token comes from just a small segment of the code, for example this corresponds to an integer with the value of 1, 2, 3, and this plus symbol corresponds to a plus token. Ok, so we're going to create a new file called basic.py and this is going to hold all the code for our basic language. So we'll begin by creating a token class, and as we've said before, it will just have a type and a value, and we'll assign that to type and then value. We will also give it a representation method so that it looks nice when it's printed out onto the terminal window. So if the token has a value it will print the type colon and then the value and if it doesn't have a value it will just print the type. Ok so now we're going to define a few constants for the different token types. So we're going to have an integer, a float, plus, minus, multiply and divide and finally the left and right parentheses. Ok, so now we can start work on the Lexer class. So I'm going to create a new class here, and in the initialize uh, method we're going to have to take in the text that we'll be processing. We'll just assign that to self.text. Ok, so we then have to keep track of the current position and also the current character. Now we are going to define an advanced method which will just advance to the next uh, character in the text. So we will increment the position and then we will set the current character to the character at that position inside the text. We can only do that if the position is less than the length of the text and in the scenario where we've reached the end of the text we will then set it to none. We are now going to call advance here at the beginning and the reason we're starting with a position of negative 1 is because the advanced method will immediately increment it to start off at uh, 0. So the next thing we have to do is create a make tokens method and we're just going to start off with the simple tokens. We'll create an empty list of tokens as our result and at the end we can return those. So we'll create a loop that goes through every character in the text and the way we'll do that is we'll check uh, while the current character is not equal to none uh, because up here as you can see we've set it to none when we reach the end of the text. So we're going to begin by ignoring characters such as spaces and tabs. So we'll just check if it's a space and a tab and if that's the case we'll just advance to uh, the next character. So we'll start by checking if the current character is a plus symbol and if that's the case we can just append a new token of type plus to uh, the list of tokens. And uh, by the way the TT before the plus that stands for token type. After that then we can advance to the next character and we're going to do the same thing here for minus multiply and divide. So 
minus multiply and then divide okay so the final two simple ones we have is a left parenthesis and a right parenthesis so we'll add those now so now we're going to move on to numbers which is going to be a slight bit more complicated we will begin by defining this digits constant so that we can uh, detect if a character is a digit so we will now check if the current character is in digits. Since a number can be more than one character, we're going to actually create a function that makes a number. So we're going to go tokens.append and we're going to call self.makeNumber. And this function is going to make either an integer token or a float token. So we will define that now. So we need to keep track of the number in string form. And we also need to keep track of the dot count. So if there are no dots in the number, then it is an integer, but if there is a dot in the number, uh, then it is a floating point number. So now we're going to create another loop inside this function, as it's going to check while the current character is not none, and the current character is still a digit or a, a dot. So if the current character is a dot, then we will uh, increment the dot count. We will also add a dot to the number string, and in the case that the dot count is already equal to 1, which means there's already been a dot in the number, we can then break out, because you can't have two dots in a single number. So if it's not a dot, then we will just uh, append the string by the current character, which now has to be a number. So at the end of the method, we'll then check uh, if the dot count is equal to 0, and if that's the case, then it is an integer. So we will return a token of type integer and we will convert our number to an integer. Otherwise it has to be a floating point so we will do the same thing but instead of integer we will change it to float and then we will convert the number to a float. So that should all work fine if we come across the character we're looking for uh, but if we don't find the character we're looking for we need to uh, return some error. So what we're going to be doing next is defining our own custom error class. So we will create an error class. This is going to take in an error name and then some details. And we will assign that to error name and details. We are now going to create an add string method and this will just create a string um, that will show the error name, colon and then the details. Now we can uh, and then we can return that result. So now we're going to subclass this error and create one called illegal uh, car error. So illegal character is the standard error name used when the lecturer comes across a character that it doesn't support. So we're going to create an init method and this will just take in details and we're going to call the super init method and we'll pass in an error name of illegal oh, illegal character and then we'll pass in the details so now if we don't come across a character we're looking for we're going to store that character in a variable we will advance and then what we want to do is we want to return an empty list so we're not going to return any tokens and we will also return um, an illegal character error and we'll pass in the character as details actually what I'll do is I'll put some single quotes around the character that should look a bit nicer and then normally at the end of the function we will then return none for the error okay so next we're going to create a run function at the bottom of our file and this is just going to take in some text and run it so what we will do is we will create a new lexer and we'll pass in that text and we'll get the tokens out of it so lexer dot make tokens and then, um, sorry, we also have to get the error out of it. And what we can do is we can then just return the tokens and the error. So later on we will have a lot more steps in the run function, but for now it's quite simple. What we're now going to do is come back into shell.py, we're going to import basic, and we should now be able to uh, get the result and the error, and call basic.run and pass in the text.
and so if there's an error we should be able to print error as a string otherwise we should then be able to print the result so after attempting to run it it said position was not defined and that's because in the advanced method of the lexer I accidentally put in position instead of self dot position another thing I noticed is that I didn't give value a default of none inside of the token I also noticed that I didn't call advance inside the make number method of the lexer so down here we need to call advance to go to the next uh, character okay so if you run the program now you should see that uh, it generates all the tokens correctly so if we type 1 plus 2 as you can see we get an integer with the value of 1 a plus symbol and an integer with the value of 2 if we do 2.5 multiply by 2.5 yeah, you can see we get floats instead of integers and then we have the multiply symbol here also if we put in an illegal character such as the letter D uh, as you can see an illegal character error message uh, appears so everything's working as expected alright so we're going to be doing one final thing in this episode and that is keeping track of the line and column numbers uh, while the lexer is running this is so that when we show errors we can pinpoint exactly where the error came from at the moment this won't benefit us very much because we are reading all the input from a single line uh, but in the future we will be able to execute external files and so then that will be very useful. Okay so the way we're going to add this is we're going to create a new class called position and the position will keep track of the line number, column number and current index and so we can then use that in the lecture and everywhere else uh, in the future of this series. So we'll create a position class in the constructor we will take in an index, a line number and then a column number. So now we're going to define an advanced method and this is just going to move on to the next index and then update the line and column number as well if necessary. For this method we need to take in the current character and you'll see why in a second. So what we'll first do is we'll increment the index then we will increment the column and so now what we want to do is we want to check if the current character is equal to a new line. And then what we will do is we'll increment the line and then we'll reset the column uh, to zero. And I just realized that I spelled that incorrectly. Okay. So next we're going to create a copy method which will just create a copy of the position. And you'll see again in a minute why we need to use this. So we'll return a new position. We're just going to pass in all our values into this new position. We're now going to head on down to the lexer and we're going to change this position to be an instance of the position class. So for the index we'll give it minus one, the line will start at zero and then the column will also start at minus one. And in the advance method we will now call advance on the position and we will use self.position.index instead to get the index. We will now update uh, the error class to take in a position start and a position end. And we will then assign that to self.position start and self.position end. So now we'll go back down to the lexer and pass in those positions wherever we generate an error. So we're going to get the position start and we will make a copy of our current position. And now we will pass in the position start and for the position end we'll just get the current position because we're after advancing in between. What we are also going to do is keep track of the file name and the file contents inside the position class. So we're going to add those as uh, arguments, file name and file text and we'll again assign those here. And when we make a copy we also have to pass those in. The reason we are doing this is so that we can tell the user exactly which file name an error came from. And we can also display the line that the error came from by getting it from the file text property. So we'll once again go back down to the lexer. And we're going to want to take in a file name now in the constructor of the lexer and again assign the file name property to it. And we can then pass those into the position. So what we can now do is update the error class to uh, display the file name and line number. So I've just added this line of code. We also need to take in a file name in the run function and pass that into the lexer. And then finally in our shell.py file uh, we can pass in a file name when we run uh, the input.
since this code isn't coming from an actual file I'm just going to put in std in as a placeholder. Just a couple of things that I forgot to do, I forgot to pass in the current character here in the advance call and then I forgot to update uh, the illegal character error to take in the position start and position end. So I'm just going to do that quickly. Okay, so we should now be able to run our program and get our updated error messages. So if we put in something incorrect, as you can see it now says uh, the file and the line number. Okay, so that's going to be it for this first episode. Uh, I've put all the code up on GitHub, so there will be a link in the video description below. If you have any questions or problems, don't forget to leave a comment below. And in the next video, we are going to be creating the parser. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like, and I will see you next time.